is Chris with the Hypercats Network, and today I thought I'd just show you guys my pressure casting system. Whole fancy contraption -y pot thing. Um, I used to do a lot of resin casting with just pouring the resin or the rubber in the mold for the mold box, and then using a vibrating table to kind of shake all the air bubbles out. Uh, but I didn't like the results. It wasn't really as air bubble free as I wanted um, and with this setup I can actually get close to zero air bubbles. It doesn't actually push all the air bubbles out, it, it sort of compresses them so small you can't even see them. Um, so this allows me to get almost crystal clear and look at that. zero air bubbles, pretty high detail. Um, these are pretty low detail shapes but you can see that they're pretty clear. What else do I have? You can kind of see these are... And if I wanted, uh, I could do visors. found a couple ways to actually form and bend a soft sheet of uh, resin. Um, but it also allows me to get higher detail pieces like this with zero air bubbles. Um, if I were to do this uh, without using the pressure casting, I have a ton of tiny little air bubbles. Same goes for uh, Borderlands belt buckles. If I was going to do something like this without pressure casting it, there's a lot of tiny little undercuts and little pock marks and goofy spots that would just sort of hang on to air bubbles. Um, so I can do all kinds of punch shapes like this is a buttload of undercuts. This whole piece is undercuts basically, no matter where you pour it from. Um, but I can do this with zero air bubbles. I think maybe there's one. Eh, looks like one air bubble. But you get both of these lips, and all the grooves and everything are super durable still because there's, you know, no air bubbles compared to if you're just going to pour resin in and you have all these air bubbles around it. Um, so I've got a lot of fun parts that I do with pressure casting system and basically this is a two horsepower eight gallon air compressor that feeds into a five gallon tank it's got two ball valves and a gauge the gauge tells me what the PSI is on this tank and then there's two two valves here that'll go either into this pot or this pot and these you can even see I mean this is two and a half gallon paint tank uh, this is all Harbor Freight parts. Pretty much everything is Harbor Freight parts. And then the pots have, um, I've kind of adapted these pots, put my own hardware on them. But they have a uh, PSI gauge, tells you how high the pot is, and then the release valve here to let the, uh, let the air out once it's done. Uh, and the reason I've got two pots here is because liquid rubber, that's what I've got mixed up here, this stuff takes longer to cure. I generally like to keep it in for 8 to 12 hours uh, just so that it stays in that pressurized environment in case there are trapped air bubbles somewhere in the piece itself. If it's not fully cured and you let all the air pressure out, that compressed air sort of expands but then it's trapped in the, uh, in the rubber. You get all these weird warped, distort, distorted molds. Um, so I like to have one for rubber and then one for resin casting. So I can pour three or four molds, have the mold rubber in here, and then during the 12 hours that this one's curing, I can still be popping out resin cast parts in the second pot. Um, the fun thing about pneumatics is it takes more air pressure than the 60 psi I need to get the full pot to 60 psi. So if I had just this empty two and a half gallon spot that I need to get to, PS to 60 psi, I need to have 80 or 90 in this pot so that this is 60 and this is 60. Um, so in order to minimize that, what I've got is just a bucket of rocks. And that, that displaces some of the air. So I've got less than two and a half gallons or however, the, however much the cubic volume is. Um, so that gives me less cubic volume of air that I have to compress. And then I've just cut a, a sheet of plywood to sit on top of that just so it's level. And it's adjustable. Um, 
most of my molds and the mold boxes, I don't really care if they're level or not. Because if I'm doing a two part, you're going to clamp it anyway, who cares? And if it's a one part mold, I can always adjust and you know balance and level things inside the pot. So I've got a part here. This is part two of a two part mold. And all I have to do is set it in here. I've got my rubber mixed up already. Pour this in. And then all I have to do is take this lid. It's got a big rubber seal on it. Put the lid on. Thanks for watching. Check out some of my other videos.